welcome everyone uh, to the uh, briefing of Operation Gatekeeper, which the Queensland Police Force State Crime Operations Task Force Argos has been conducting. How we got to this point is in January 2010, Task Force Argos detectives from State Crime Operations commenced the investigations in regard to a website that was well known within Australia and in other jurisdictions over the world. From our investigations, it led to us to an address at Helensvale on the Gold Coast. Police executed a warrant at that address where they located a 23-year-old male person who has since been charged for possessing child exploitation images. That 23-year-old male person is also the administrator of that website. Within that website, we were able to take control of it and within it, we discovered there were 44,000 child exploitation images, some 88,000 postings, a posting being somebody's either made a comment about the images on the website or they have themselves posted a child exploitation material image. From taking possession of that website, we were also able to ascertain over 21,000 individual users from 100 countries had accessed that website and either posted images or made comments about those images. Investigations within Queensland led us to execute some 46 warrants across the state, leading to the arrest of 21 adult male persons and the dealing of um, with one juvenile age 15. Uh, we had charged uh, those 21 persons with 86 charges. They were either have appeared before the court or presently before the courts. We are also uh, perhaps the best sign of um, the success of this operation was we were able to locate 29 child victims. Of those 29 child victims, one of those children resided here in Brisbane. We were further able to identify four other children in New South Wales. Through our expert victim identification officer at Task Force Argos, we then identified a further eight child victims in Russia, another five child victims in Mexico. The other victims resided in the UK and the USA. Can I just make this point, that these images are not just images. These images themselves create a demand within the market and a demand which to supply that demand leads to the exploitation of children. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make, that your possession or accessing these websites is adding to that demand market. Behind each one of these images, there's a child getting abused. The, th the next point I wish to make about these images is it's quite obvious there's a direct correlation between these images and children being offended. People that possess these images or have an unsavoury interest in these images are usually involved with some type of offending against children. The next point I wish to make about this is most of these offenders in which we have knocked on their doors have been sitting in their home in the security that they think they cannot be touched by law enforcement agencies. Can I please say this, that if you're on your computer at home, it is no safety for, for you not being located. Police will follow you into your home, either through the images or through the websites which you're accessing, and we will knock on your door and prosecute you for those offences. What are their occupations? The occupations range from those unemployed to semi-professional people and process workers. There are a number of people with access to children, but specifically no teachers. Any clergy members? No. What were the ages of the children who were removed from home? The, the child in Brisbane was 11 years of age. The children within the images age from infants up to adolescence. The children that were removed in other countries such as Russia were all under the age of 16 years of age. Did police, when you took over this operation from the house at Helensvale. Did you run it out of the house at Helensvale or do you have any calls? No, once we executed the warrant at Helensvale, we were able to get the um, material that we needed and we ran it from back here at Task Force Argos. How did you track down the child victims in Brisbane? Through the images. And then, was the male to female? 
It was a male child. And possibly related to the child. He was known to the offender, and the offender was actively using the website to access images. So Helen's bar man, was he actually hosting this international website so that this international uh, website basically started in Australia? The uh, website itself is based on a server which is located in Holland, in Europe, and uh, the individual in Helensvale was the administrator of that site. So he had complete control over the website from here on the Gold Coast. How difficult was that job for Argos Protective, running um, child pornography sites? Well, we didn't actually run the site. What happened when we um, obtained the details of the site and had the administrator, we were able to very quickly quickly close the site down and freeze it. Uh, obviously we don't want a site like that running, so the, the primary thing was to close it down, but in closing the site down, one of our other um, priorities was ensuring that we encapsulated as much evidence as we could from, from that website, which we did. I mean, this could be a massive generalisation, isn't it? When most people think of people who access child porn, you think of older men, but the No, I'm not. I think um, everyone has this uh, stereotype that it's a, an older male person. This uh, crime class is committed by people from different ages, different walks of life and uh, different sexes as well. How did you come across this Helen's Bar man? Was it a tip off from international <coughs> or was this by your own good work? It was through Task Force Argos's efforts. Um, I won't talk about the mythology about how we did it because we'd like to keep that um, to ourselves. But um, over, the over the last few years, can I just say this, that the technologies have advanced in this area, but alongside that, the abilities of Task Force Argos and the police have also advanced, and uh, we've become quite uh, acute in our methodology to, to target these type of people. What age was the youngest child found in New South Wales? I haven't got those details, sorry. Are you expecting further arrests? Yes, we are. We have a number of computers that are still being forensically examined and a number of inquiries running out. So we, we um, predict there will be further arrests. And would that just be, they'd be interstate and internationally as well? Yes. Are any of the 21 accused repeat offenders? No. And have any of them been dealt with through the courts? Like, is it finalised for any of them sentence? I believe some have been finalised. Do you actually know what they got? Do you know? No, I don't, sorry. When, um, when was the Helen's family Okay, it was in uh, January 2010, um, and between January 2010 and now, um, a lot of those people that were on that side, um, and especially when we initially took that side, uh, people were actively still trying to gain access and make postings to that site, which we of course kept that um, to ourselves with the um, idea that we could still capture IP addresses of people trying to access that at site or download material. Let me get this right. As soon as you arrested the Helen's Bar man, you immediately just age, like shut it down, but people could still access it. People would still try and access the site, yeah. but they could not access the, the child exploitation material. Okay. How many different countries are the offenders from? Um, well, we've got a IP addresses or addresses from over 100 countries, and uh, the offenders are predominantly in, uh, as I said, Russia, Mexico, UK, and the USA. No, I didn't. Did anyone tell you what the reaction was from these people who probably thought they were safe and secure during the Saturday night? I think the normal reaction of these type of people is they think they're safe in their home behind a computer. They see it as a victimless crime. It is not a victimless crime. Each one of those images is a crime scene photo of a child getting abused. Um, Argus has had some impressive <coughs> successes over the years, but it doesn't seem to be able to stop, does it? Is there ever, any going, ever going to be any end to this sort of I hope there is going to be an end to it, but um, as we've seen over the years, um, the market is still there. People are still accessing this material, people are still producing this material and placing it on websites. How would you describe the images? I mean, you don't tell us what was, but in terms of severity, I know in the past you know, they range from... I think uh, images, um, if you were to say to me, is something um, bad or really bad, I think it's all bad. 
I think any any image that displays a child being exploited in a sexual position or a sexual connotation is a bad image. Simple how, as that. How big is the problem in Australia and how do we compare to the rest of the world? I think in Australia we're very successful in this crime type. Um, I think comparatively around the world, it's wherever the websites are around the world, which is worldwide. That's why they call it WWW. So the problem is worldwide, and I don't think Australia is any worse than any other country. Have you passed on the IP addresses that you have found of international authorities, and do you have any idea if they've made arrests based on that? Yes, we have. Uh, we've passed it on to our counterparts in other jurisdictions. Uh, we worked in partnership with Australian Federal Police and also other law enforcement agencies overseas. They've made any arrests overseas based yeah. on what you've given them? Yes, they have. Any on this country? Uh, I believe Russia, for one. Did you know of any other countries? Uh, Mexico. Did you know of any things like Big Creek? What sort of conditions were they being held? Or? No, notoriously, these type of people will befriend pe uh, children. Um, they will befriend their own children, unfortunately, or, or relatives' children, or family friends' children. They'll access children any way they can. Child in Brisbane, um, when was the child physically removed from that situation? Do you have any um, information on how long it's been going on for? I uh, don't know exactly the details of how long it's been going on for, but when we came aware of it last year, we removed the child straight away. Do you have a month? Do you have a month last year? No, I don't, sorry. Um, Australia-wide, I know the figures for Queensland, I haven't got the Australia-wide figures. As, as you might rate on the scale <coughs> of child exploitation websites, would this be um, you know, the largest, one of the largest uh, to have been shut down? I, th I don't think it's the largest, but I think it's one of the largest. I think um, what we've seen here in Australia is predominantly these websites have been based overseas, the administrators have been overseas. But here in Queensland, for the first time, I believe, We've actually seen a homegrown administrator on a website with a significant site with postings from numerous countries, 100 countries, as I've said. So the Queensland Police completed the international investigation? Yes, we did. We made referrals to all the other agencies overseas. Uh, we work in partnership with those other agencies and we're having nearly daily contact with those. So how, how does the website work? Do you have to have a password to get into there? Or no. Or be invited? Or? No. You can log on and you become, can become a user and then you can access and make postings and comments, just like m most other websites. How do these websites interact with other child exploitation websites? Sometimes these websites link to each other, sometimes they're standalone. You mentioned that 44,000 images were on the website at the time. Um, I think there were more than 300,000 images seized. Did, did you then raise up those people? That's right. So from the 44,000 images that we originally took possession of from the website, we then went and executed warrants, 46 warrants in total. And from those 46 warrants, we've taken possession of 307,000 images. So you said sometimes they link to other websites, sometimes they don't. In this particular case, did this website uh, have connections to other websites? No. Is it Bell and Balmain making any commercial benefit out of this website? Is it making money? I think all websites, you, as an administrator, you can make a form of money, but uh, notoriously with these websites, they're not uh, set up for a commercial venture. They're usually set up for um, the enjoyment, if you could call it enjoyment, of, uh, of people um, and to facilitate the trading of images. The 23-year-old at Helensvale is very IT savvy, I'd call it. Uh, very articulate with the use and administration of websites and the downloading of the images. Is it shock you that an event like this and a web with an international website would be based you know, in, a, in a Queensland city like that? I think uh, the strong message we've got from this Operation Gatekeeper is that uh, it no longer sits offshore in Australia. This type of venture can uh, occur in our own backyard in Queensland. Um, and that's the, um, I suppose, the characteristics of websites in the IT world this day that we have to deal with. How long have you been running for? Uh, we don't know exactly. 
at least 12 months. Do you think people are not aware that even just accessing these um, big websites, they can, they're breaking the law? I, I do. I think there uh, needs to be some um, community understanding that, uh, you know, the viewing and accessing of these images is an offence. Um, and as I said before, that um, the more important message to get out to people is that if you are viewing or possessing these images, you're creating a market for children to be exploited. Is this the first example of a homegrown site? We've had one other in Queensland on the north coast some three years ago, I believe. Yeah. But not on the scale? Not on the scale.